Okay, we're going to keyframe just the candle flame. And when you open up this file, and uh, it will have a uh, scene with the actual flame selected. So if you double finger click on the trackpad or right mouse click with a, a mouse onto the flame, the candle flame is listed over here. Um, then we can start adding some keys. So the quickest way to add keys is to turn on the auto keyframe button down here by activating the red button. And uh, if I scale now by hitting S, so how if you drag the cursor close to the flame, which is only a little sphere right now, and hit S, then Z. So hit S, then Z. And if you drag out uh, away from the center of the sphere, it will elongate that. So initially, I'm just going to make it fairly flat, and then I'm going to drag down here on the playhead. Now actually, that has to be on. Now that's on. Now that's keyframing. So if I hit S and Z and drag out, now you can see down here it's placed a keyframe in here. Now I've got auto key framing turned on. Uh, if it's off, you don't have the little button. If it's on, you do have the keys indicated there with the little button. So drag along somewhere else on the timeline, maybe to frame 10. Hit S and then Z to drag your flame up so it's nice and high. All right, and it's auto keyed the frame. Drag along a little bit further. Maybe only, maybe you only want to go forward one frame then you can use this little uh, controller down here so you can go ahead of frame, S, Z, drag it right down. And so we'll just get a few random, S, Z, we'll get a bit of random scaling going on, S, Z, but it's only on the Z axis, so we'll just move along. Um, I accidentally dragged the start frame forward. So you can type in the start frame and the end frame here. I could change that to 50. So it's only a 50 frame long animation. And so we'll just throw in a few other keyframes here. So S, Z, back down. So we'll get our, oops. Get our candle so it is fairly low for a little while. But be very careful that you don't move the actual candle. And as I said, scale it up just a little bit. And the here, as I said, let's go it back down. So it's nice and low. Okay, so now if I drag the playhead backwards and forwards, which is called scrubbing, we'll see here in the little rendered image to the right, top right, that yes, we've got a candle light, uh, flame and it's lifting up ni nice and high and it's reflecting off our label on the bottle and that has a specular map mapped onto it and it's got a bump map as well as a diffuse map. You can see the areas that are specular um, high specularity are reflecting. So we can go in later and have a play and put our logo into that um, map and replace the, uh, the JPEGs with our own logo. But for now, um, we can scrub the playhead and we can see that candle moving up and down. Now, if you want to get into the, to the real uh, sort of higher end animation where you can have a little bit more control, you go down here to the graph editor and because we're only wanting to work with the Z, Z scale of the candle flame, we can just turn everything else off and we're left with the Z scale and we're viewing just the scale on a timeline with all the keyframes indicated here with the little square uh, squares here that are highlighted orange because they're all selected. If I hit A 
to deselect them. Uh, just like you're out on the out out here um, in the workspace, uh, if you hit A, uh, it'll select all the keyframes. Or if you use B, you can drag select and get those free keyframes. A to deselect again. Or you can even use C and you can uh, circle select. Uh, but you have to hit return with C. So A to deselect. So now, if I wanted to add a few little key frames and make a flicker, I could just come along here and I could hit I to insert a keyframe only for that channel, and it adds a keyframe. And if I want to move a keyframe, I can just hit G. So you can see, if I move that keyframe up or down, it, it correspondingly moves in its scale on the Z axis. So I could move along a frame ahead to frame six, and insert another keyframe on that channel. Deselect my frames by hitting A, uh, B, just select that frame, or I could hit right mouse click it to select it, hit G to lift it up. I'm gonna have a flicker here, so it's just gonna lift up a little. Then I'm gonna move along to the next frame. A to deselect, I to insert a keyframe. Insert the keyframe, hit G to drop that down. Okay, so now I've, I've introduced a little flicker. Now I can copy that flicker and paste that somewhere along here on the timeline, maybe here, by going and selecting those three frames by hitting B, selecting them, Command C to copy, go along to a space on the timeline where we've got a, a dull flame, and then Command V, and it's pasted those frames in. So I've got a quick little flicker, and you'll see the candles popping up out, out of there. So make sure you hit Command S and save your scene, save your file. Um, and what we're going to do then is we're going to get a render. We're going to render out our animation, and it's only going to be a 60 or so frame animation. I've got it set to 50. So what we need to do to get a render is we need to go into our camera settings and make sure everything's set up the right way and we've got our output um, going to the right location. So if you want to do a quick um, render, you can wind the resolution down here in the preset. So we've got our camera selected over here. You can wind it down to about 10%. You know, that's pretty pretty low res, so that will should tick away pretty quickly. Uh, remembering we've got 50 frames, that's going to still take a while. Change your output file. So it's maybe um, in your, uh, I'll, just, I'll just pick a file. Usually in your documents, in your CG folder, it's a good idea to have a file called renders. So CG renders is where I put it. So hit accept. So you can see here it's sending it to CG, CG renders. Uh, you can create that file easily, like if you go in here and you don't have a file in your render location, you can just hit the create new folder uh, directory and you can name that renders and then hit accept. Okay. So just I'll just do that anyway for the sake of showing you. So make a new folder, call it renders. It's in alphabetical order, or you can get it in order of uh, when you made it, and then hit renders and then hit accept. Okay, so it's going to our render folder. Uh, we need to change it to a movie file, so I'll just change it to an H.264 format, and um, the actual uh, the quality of the render. Um, let's just see what we've got here. We've got like the sampling. And we've got the sampling here. The overall sampling is the most important. So each render, uh, for each frame, it's going to do 200 passes. That's a lot of passes. That's going to be a really high-end render. I might wind that down to 50 just for now. So that'll be you know good enough. And so all you have to do then is click Animation and it will start rendering. You can see we've got a render here. It's ticking away and sending each um, frame off and compiling a .mov. You can see the resolution here, it's very pixelated, but it should give you an idea about your candle and how the flame is animating 
and you can upload that file as a .mov to wherever you need it need it to be. Um, so once that's finished, you just need to go back to your renders file and play it with uh, preferably with VLC Media Player.